but it's something that gets stuck in my crawl. I've been accused of that myself, the victim mentality. So it set me off a little bit. Set me off. But I will move on because this is supposed to be about hopefulness (laughs) and inspiration and positivity. But you know I like to get on my soapbox uh, soapbox once in a while, so it's okay. I don't harp, harp on it too much. I wanted to move on to the topic today, which is what is your favorite winter sport? Do you have one? Now, I was thinking of participation sports when I put this out there. Some people took it as uh, viewing. That's fine. Jim says nothing. Adele says sitting in front of the fire. I like that. That sounds like a great wintertime activity for me. Michelle says indoor color guard. Gail says snorkeling in Florida. That's technically winter, I guess. Linda says gymnastic. Wa- gymnastics, watching or cheerleading, judging. Diane says planning a vacation to a warm destination. That counts. Laurie says channel surfing. Jay says skiing. There you go. Finally, somebody who likes to ski because that's what I was thinking of. Skiing, snow tubing, uh, snowmobile riding. What else do people do in the winter? I'm not really sure because I've never really looked into it. Kathy says if it was 10 years ago, I'd say skiing. But the older I get, the more I like sitting in front of a fire reading. I still like snow tubing, though. Uh, Sandra says, I used to love to ski, but I would probably break both legs if I tried it now. So don't do it. Just don't do it. Cheryl says, going to Key West. Okay, technically a wintertime activity. Ashley says, curling. And Kim says, fishing in Florida. You know, ice fishing, that's another uh, big time winter activity. My cousin lives in Colorado. He goes ice fishing all the time. Loves, loves, loves it. Mm. Sitting on ice with a big hole, holding a rod, waiting for a nibble. No thanks. Not my cup of tea. But whatever floats your boat, that's one of my favorite activities in case you did not know. Boating. Love boating. It floats my boat. And uh, soon enough, it will be time to get those boats in the water. Not mine. I don't have one. Not yet. Moving along to today's blog post. I'm talking about aging gracefully. Is that what we want to do? I put up a very interesting picture of myself (laughs) with a face mask on. A face mask that I had just tried for the first time. I've never face masked before. It was very cold. (laughs) I'm going to say that. I have a feeling it's probably not that cold in the winter, uh, or excuse me, in the summer, but it's always probably just a little bit of a shock when you put something like that on your face. So it is so hard to accept the fact that we are aging. I've always struggled with the choice of growing old gracefully or fighting it with every option available. I haven't really done anything as of yet. No Botox, no fillers, not even any treatments for the most part. Um, I recently bought a collagen-based serum that was ridiculously expensive but didn't see really any difference. I was hoping some of my age or sunspots would fade, but not so much. I got a bunch of beauty products from one of my friends for my birthday, so I did try that mask. It was my first one. I think I look like Jason from those movies. At least you can't see that awful H between my brows. That is all I can seem to see in every picture I have taken of myself in the last few years. Now, the real problem is you can't win no matter which direction you decide to go. If you let age do its thing, you will be judged. You'll be called old. Look at that old hag. If you get some work done, you can usually tell. And you will be judged for that as well. So you can't win regardless of what you do. Did you happen to watch the show uh, This Is Us? Do you watch that? A couple of weeks ago, they showed a future scene of Kevin. All gray. Older version of Kevin. Still looked hot and gorgeous. Of course, they just changed the color of his hair. It's not like they added wrinkles or anything. But men are still considered very distinguished as they get older. Women, just old. <laughs> it's just one of those things that probably will never change. 
How do we go about handling it then? Do we buy a bunch of low-key beauty products like the masks and the serums? Do they really work? I would love to hear about any products that have made a difference in your life. A woman I met at the Rise Business Conference is a representative for Rodan and Fields. I like what she has to say about the products. In fact, she didn't even start out representing them. She said that she just liked the products and somebody had suggested to her, you know, if you start selling them, you get a huge discount for your own products. And so she she thought, okay, why not? She has done so well as a representative for this company that she retired from her teaching job in Pennsylvania. I don't know if you know much. You know, teachers always get this reputation for being paid extremely low. I don't know what people are considering extremely low, but in Pennsylvania, they are not getting paid extremely low. In fact, they are getting paid more than I've ever made in my entire life. Their starting salary is the salary that I had for my last job. So I don't have a lot of sympathy for teachers. Um, I know that it's different in different states. I know that in Philly, they make very little money. I know in New Jersey, they don't make as much money as in the suburbs of Philadelphia or other parts of the, the state. But my point is, she was one of the ones, more than likely, I don't know this for sure, more than likely was making a very decent salary as a teacher. She retired. She retired 15 years early so that she can focus on Rodan and Fields full time. So she obviously really believes in these products. They are pricey, to say the least. And I'm not at a point where I can start them. But I would like to. I'd like to give them a go. When it comes to Botox, I'm very hesitant. It seems like once you start something like that, you really can't stop. And that is when you start to go a little overboard, look like you've had work done, get that little frozen look on your face, not to mention the cost of that as well. Aging is inevitable, obviously, but do you embrace it or do you fight it? I'm just hanging in there for now, horrified every time I see a new dark spot show up on my face. My love of the sun certainly not helping me. I always wear sunscreen, but there is no doubt I spend way too much time in the sun, but I don't see that changing anytime soon. If I will age faster, then so be it. It is one of the true joys I have in life. I also try to do things that will help camouflage some of my worst areas. I already mentioned the H I have in between my eyebrows. So, so attractive. I would wear bangs if I could, but they have never worked for me. I have a horrific calic and since my hair is curly, I think bangs would look silly. But I do try to make sure my hair looks as good as possible so there is something else to focus on. I also don't mind wearing my glasses in pictures anymore because it helps hide that dreaded H or at least detract from it. We can always dress nice and stylish. Put the focus on your clothes. Wear a lot of bling. I may have wrinkles, but damn, look at my diamonds. <laughs> I once had a friend who said diamonds are the only accessory you will ever need. It's pretty funny. Now, there are ways to work around it to put more focus on what you want to feature and downplay what you don't. Maybe that is why the brightly colored hair is so popular, to put the focus on that. Maybe. I'm not sure. But like it or not, we are aging. And, of course, it is always better than the alternative. It will show. You will feel it. And you won't be able to do everything that you used to. That is another reason to work out and strength train. You will be stronger and able to keep doing what you love longer. It wards off against injuries. But that is another topic for another day. For now, I'm digging into the rest of the masks I got in my gift bag. I only did this mask yesterday, but I haven't noticed anything different. I mean, it was nice and dewy soft when I took it off for sure. Um, I will move on to some more serum when I can afford it. In the meantime, I'm going to keep up that camouflaging. Keep up that camouflaging. So it is already hump day, people. We are halfway there. Let's go do a Wednesday and make today your best day yet. Thank you for listening to The Hopeless, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. Ellen, Tucker and I both growing older. We don't have much time. We need to get on your show now.
before we look really, really haggard. Come on, Ellen, have us on your show.